Estevan terminology. In this video, I want to talk about Estevan terminology, such term that important in the Estevan. For example, TILAC, for example, OMP or color. But first, I want to talk about some expressions, some terminology that we mentioned in the previous video. Okay, let's get started. As you remember, we are familiar with many topics, with some topics in the Estevan. You know that in Estevan, we have three main controllers. One, first, we manage, and second, we smart, the brain of Estevan, and then we bond. These are controllers of the Estevan. We manage is the management plane. We smart is the control plane, and we bond is the orchestration plane. And also we have van eights. Van eights are data plane in the Estevan. For example, we can use V H or C H or other types of van age in the Estevan. Because of that, when you talk about Estevan, this means that you talk about these components. Okay? Okay. And you know that in the Estevan, we have two type of connections. Two type of connections. First, control connections. And second, data connections. All of the connections in the SD-WAN are secure. Control sessions or control connection are establishing between controllers and between controllers and WAN eggs. Okay? For example, we know that between VBAND and VSMART we have a control connection over DTLS, for example, and also between VBAND and VManage, we have control connection over, for example, DTLS, and also between VManage and VSmart. Next, we have connection, secure connection over DTLS and also after this control connection we have data plane connection data plane connection between van eights I use VH VH or CH not important now for us in data plane we have IPsec connections and we use IPsec to secure end-to-end -end communication between v or be between van eights in the data plane. Also, we have some control connection between v manage and van H. v manage and van H, for example, v -H over DTLS or TLS, and also VSmart and VH. Okay, VSmart and VH. Over DTLS or TLS. V1, VSmart, V1, V manage, V manage, VSmart, V manage, VH, VS start, VSmart, VH, and also a temporary connection between V bond and VH over DTLS. You know that this is temporary and because after the first establishment of this secure connection and sending we manage IP and we smart IP from V1 to VH, we don't need to this connection because of that it is tear down. Okay. These are our control connections and also data plane connections, all of these connections are secure. Some over DTLS or TLS and some over 
IPsec. You know that we don't use IPsec in the for control con control communication, and we use IPsec only in the data plane between WAN aids. Okay, the next topic that I want to review in this in this video that we can use some form of these controllers and van age in the sd van for example for vman age we have a virtual machine or vm and the vman age is only provided as a vm we don't have a, we, we don't have a physical we manage we manage the VM it's software okay s w software and also vsmart is a VM and we have vsmart as a software and also we bond we bond also is a VM and we have it as a software but when age R van H are provided in the form of VM that is a software or as a appliance that is the hardware okay only van H can be provided as an appliance and as a as an hardware okay we manage is software vsmart is software vban is software all of these controllers are softwares are virtual machines that we can deploy this virtual machine over esxi vmware esxr or kvm linux kvm okay but van edge is software if you order software Van edge can be hardware if you order hardware. Okay, only van edge can be in the form of hardware or software. This is a, this is an important point that you should know. Okay, this is the first line. Let's get second line. In the SC van, we use OMP, OMP, or overlay management protocol omp is the protocol that we use that in the sd van for some tasks for many tasks for example routing for example policy advertisement for example key exchange i want to talk about some of them first i want to start with routing as you know, in the SD van, as we as I mentioned in the previous videos, in the SD van, we have a few controllers, a few control plane. We know that the control plane is VSmart. Okay, we have one or two or three VSmart. And we have many data plane. You know that we have one or two or three data plane per site. Maybe you have 2000 sites. If you have 2000 sites and every site has one or two edge, maybe you have 4000 data plane device or data plane, data plane VM. Okay. And you know that data plane in the SD van is van H. Okay, some or a little control plane, VSmart, many data planes, van H. Okay, and you know that this is one of the benefits of SD van that we can reduce control plane in compare of traditional routing. Okay, but how routing occurs in the SD van this is now this is the topics that i want to talk about in this video 
Okay, let's talk about OMP. As you know, OMP is a routing protocol and also a protocol for exchanging keys and also a protocol for advertising policy. OMP is used over DTLS connection or TLS connection between VSmart and VH or if you have two or three VSmart between VSmarts. For example, if we have two VH, this is the first VH, VH1. VH1 is the edge rotor of our branch, one of our branch. And VH2 is another edge rotor of one of our branch. For example, we have here a branch with net A. Net A is a subnet of VH connected to VH1 and net B connected to VH2. Okay? And these two VHs are connected to the internet, for example. Connected to the internet from here, connected to INET or internet, and also VH2 connected to INET or internet. And also you know that we have a VSmart in some place, for example, in one cloud that we can connect to that cloud from internet, VSmart, okay? Brain of our routing, and here is the internet. VSmart connected to internet, and also VX are connected to the internet. Okay, and you know that we have in this topology secure connection between VH and VSmart. Look at here. This is, for example, DTLS connection between VH1 and VSmart over internet. Look at here, for example, DTLS connection over VH1 and also VSmart. And another DTLS connection, DTLS is a secure connection used only for control traffic. Another control connection between VH2 and VSmart, okay? Over or inside of this secure connection, we have OMP. Because of that, OMP is, ru is running in a secure tunnel and OMP, OMP packets are encrypted and transferred between VSmart and VH, okay? This is OMP. OMP, if you want find a similar protocol like OMP in the traditional routing, you can think to BGP. As you know, in BGP, we have a central point. We can have a central point for propagating routes. We, we name it route reflector. VSmart is like route reflector in BGP and OMP is BGP, is like BGP, okay? And over this secure connection, we have neighborship or we have two peer, a neighborship between VH1 and VSmart and an OMP neighborship between VH2 and VSmart. Okay, this is the first important points that you have two peer membership, a membership between one of the VHs and VSmart and another membership between another VH and another VSmart. And also, I want, to rem I want to mention that if you have more than one VSmart, between the VSmarts are also, we will have OMP membership. Okay, OM, OM, OMP neighborship, okay? We will talk about OMP neighborship between VSmarts in another videos. In our video, in this session, I want to talk about only one VSmart and some VHs, okay? Because of that, 
OMP neighborship or peer OMP peer membership between VH and VSmart are automatically established establishing when the connection DTLS connection or TLS connection between VH and VSmart established automatically without doing anything OMP now is run and neighborship is down okay one important question here is that what is the identifier for OMP is the identifier for OMP for a device is host name for example OMP peer neighborship in VH1 shoes VSmart host name or in VSmart shoes VH1 no in st -Van, we have a unique identifier, a very important unique identifier. We name it, we call it system IP. System IP, for example, 1111, is a unique identifier that we identify with that particular entity. This is a unique identifier. The system IP isn't rotable and should only be unique the system ip only require the system ip only requirement is that uniqueness every device in the sd van for example every device or every entity for example v smart v manage v bond v8 should have a unique system ip for example in our scenario the system IP of VSmart should be, can be 1111. This is the system IP. We configure it. You will see it in the scenarios I implemented in your video. V, v smart system IP is 1111. It's an example. And for example, VH one system IP in our example could be system IP could be one 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 ten for example it's only a simple example and VH2 system IP system IP only should be unique it's not rotable one 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 twelve one one twenty okay and if the OMP connection established between VH and VSmart, the OMP identifier means system IP is can be seen in the VH as an OMP neighbor. For example, if you type a command or from vManage monitor, check the OMP peer neighborship you can see that in vh1 we have one neighbor that the vsmart of our neighbor vsmart is 1111 and if you check in vsmart omp neighborship you can see two system ip as a neighbor vh1 vh2 11110 11120 okay we will see all of these topics in our implementation of Estevan topologies. Okay, we are now understand that OMP session are OMP sessions are establishing only between VSmart and VH or VSmart and VSmarts. But now it's not important VSmart and VSmart for us only VSmart and VH. Okay. But what is the usage of OMP in, ro in routing? Yes, it's a good question. When you have OMP, every VH should send their OMP routes, their routes, their connected routes to the VSmart. VSmart is the central repository for all routes. As you know, when we have a van edge, I mentioned all of these topics in the 
previous video when we have a van edge or for example v edge we have two sites one site is service site and another site is transport site okay transport site are connect transport site is connected to the transport networks for example internet for example mpls for example lt or other types of other transports and service sites connected to our lan okay for example we have a vrf in our vh vrf1 as you know we use vpn uh, vpn and vpn means vrf but in st1 ter terminology we use vpn okay for example we have vpn1 one vpn simple okay and in vpn1 you see that we have net a net a is a service site route and in routing we should send we should advertise our connected or learned routes to another router and after we are advertising the connected routes to other routers other routers can send data to us this is routing okay in the st van we should send our routes or connected routes for example or the routes that we are learning from the service site to the vsmart with omp here we have omp and send with omp for example net a to vsmart and also net b from vh2 to vsmart and now in vsmart we have two routes one net a from vh1 and then net b from vh2 i should mention here that vh1 and vh2 can be represented in the other form for example tlac i should talk about tlac now i use the vantage or vh1 this is the same as next top in the for example traditional routing after vsmart learn these routes vsmart can advertise these routes to the other van ages for example vsmart can advertise net b to vh1 and net a to vh2 and after that vh2 will will be vh2 can send traffic for net b to vh1 and vh1 can send traffic for net b to vh2 okay it's like bgp road reflector but we have mentioned we but we should know some and other terms for completing these types of routing for example in the st van terminology we use an important terminology names tlac tlac or transport location tlac or transport location is like next hop in the bgp i want to review a basic example in bgp for example look at here this is bgp and traditional routing between r1 and r2 we have bgp session okay and r1 have net a and also the ip of r1 the ip of interface of r1 connected to r2 is ip1 and r2 ip2 okay you know that with uh, when r1 send with B, send with bgp update net a to r2 it also sends some attributes some bgp attributes for example next stop next up ip2 and this means that 
when R2 receive this update, this BGP update, R2 knows that it can send traffic for net A to IP2, to IP1. Next up is IP1, to IP1, okay? You can see in R2's routing table or RIB that for sending traffic to net A, I should use the next hop of IP1. And then if R2 receive traffic for net A, okay, it send it forward traffic toward to IP1. And after that, traffic is received, will be received in net A. Okay, this is the traditional routing. In the SC1 routing, we don't use next up. We use TLAC. TLAC or transport location. Because of that, when we when for example VH1 send net A to VSmart, it send also the TLAC of its connection. But what is the TLAC? For example, here we have a TLAC. I will talk about this in this video, but for now only I use TLAC1. For when sending net A to VSmart, it send also TLAC1. This means that if anyone or everyone want to send traffic to net A, it should be sent to TLAC1. TLAC is like next stop in BGP. And also, if here is TLAC2, okay, VH2 send net B2 via smart with TLAC2. TLAC is same as next stop. And this means that via smart, if anybody, if anyone want to send traffic to net V, it should send the traffic to TLAC2. Yes, I know. I know that you are, you don't know about TLAC. Because of that, first we should talk about TLAC. After we understand TLAC, we can continue the routing. Because of that, first let's get started with TLAC. And after that, we can continue, we will continue this routing. Okay? What is a TLAC? TLAC is transport location. TLAC means transport location. And TLAC has a definition. I want to talk about TLAC especially. Okay. The TLAC definition is this definition, TLAC. TLAC equal to first system IP. I explain, I will explain all of these components. Plus color. Oh, what is the color? We will talk, it, talk about it. And finally, encapsulation. Okay, system IP, you know system IP. And color, you don't know color. This is the first time I want to talk about color and encapsulation. Okay, I will especially talk about encapsulation. First, I should remember that we can have many sites in our company. For example, in this scenario, we have two sites in our company. One site have one VH and other site have another VH. For example, we have one site here, site one, site or organization. In site one, we have, we can have one edge or two edge for redundancy and high availability or more edge, okay? But for now, we have, for example, one edge, VH, VH1. And VH1 can connect to many transport types. For example, VH1 can connect to internet and also connect to MPLS. Internet is a public transport and MPLS is a private transport. 
Also, may I also maybe you have site two. For example, site one is data center and site two one of our remote branches. Okay, site two. Here we have VH2, and also we have inter we have connected we connected a VH2 to internet and MPLS. Okay. As you know, as you remember, in the traditional routing, we use these terminologies. We have router and then we have interface. Okay. And every interface has IP address. The IP address is assigned to the interface, not to the router. If you have one interface, you have one IP address for that interface. If you have two interfaces, you should assign two IP addresses to that interfaces. You know this. In the SD-WAN terminology, it's the same. You have one WAN edge. One edge, WAN edge is the router. It is the node. We call it node. In SD WAN, we call it node. Node van is vanage. We have one node, for example, in site one, or maybe two nodes, or maybe three nodes. Okay, it's possible. But now we have two nodes in two sites, one node per site. And in in a node, we have two connections or two interface. We use the the name of circuit for these interfaces, okay? We don't use internet. In, we don't use interface. We use circuit. The circuit of internet, the circuit of MPLS. Here, the circuit of internet and also the circuit of MPLS. Okay, let's review. In this scenario, we have two sites. Per site, in our scenario, we have one VH, one node. And per node, we have two circuit. Okay. If you have two circuit, you need two identifier, such as traditional routing. If you have two interfaces, you need two IP addresses. Okay. The, uh, the, Identifier of every circuit is TLAC. We don't use IP address for this circuit. We use TLAC. For example, we have the, here two TLAC. TLAC1, the identifier of internet connection of one edge one of site one, and TLAC2, the identifier, the unique identifier of MPLS circuit of VH1 in site 1. And also we have TLAC3, the unique identifier of internet circuit of VH2 of site 2 or in site 2. And also TLAC4. Okay? TLAC is equal to, uh, to the IP address of interfaces in the traditional router okay very good and now you are know that tlac is a unique identifier or is a tag or is a tag for a circuit for example if you have one van edge and two transport types you have you will have two tlac tlac one tlac two and according to the definition of tlac we can write the TLAC exactly. For example, if I use this system IP in site one, 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 for example, it's, a, it's an example, or one, 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 10, and also one, 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 20 in site two, the TLACs are right here. One 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 ten system IP plus color. We don't know color. Okay, I should speak about the color. I should talk about the color. Color and then 
encapsulation. The first step is system IP, okay? And in TLAC2, in TLAC2, also the system IP is 11110 and then color and then encapsulation. And here in the TLAC3, we have 11120 and color and encapsulation. And in TLAC4, 11120 color encapsulation. As you know, we can't configure same IP address in the two interfaces of a router. And also, we can't configure two same TLAC, we can't configure two same TLAC in the one van edge. Because of that, we need another identifier, another unique identifier, another, another part for TLAC to be unique. Okay, because of that, we use color. Color is a identifier, is a distinct identifier for TLAC. We use color for many things. For example, when we talk about NAT, we will use color. But for now, color is a tools that we can unique with that the TLAC, okay? How we can unique TLAC with color? For example, we have some predefined color, okay? Let's mention here, color has two types, public color and private color, private color, private color. For our discussion, this is not important that we mention private or public because the private or public color is important in the NAT topics in the sd -WAN. Now it's not important for us that we are using private color or public color because of that I don't want to delve into these topics now. But also I say that, for example, a public color maybe this internet or another colors and private color for example mpls and another i don't want to delve to the color uh, concept now when we talk about nat or other topics related to color i will talk about it this okay because of that when you use color you have when you use color in TLAC, you can you can write TLAC, define TLAC to one 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 ten plus biz internet. Biz internet means business internet or internet. And when you use color, you can use MPLS. When you're configuring circuits in the SD WAN, you should define the color. For example, when you attach and circuit a circuit to internet it's good to use this internet color it's it's optional but it's better that you use the color is similar to the real encapsulation real transport okay i use this internet for internet types mpls for MP, mpls lt for lt or other colors and also we have colors blue green or red yellow other colors now it's better that we use the color same as transport types, okay? And here also for TLAC3, the color is Biz Internet and also for MPLS is MPLS. As you see, now the TLACs are unique. This means that, for example, when van H1 send net A to VSmart and VSmart send this net A to VH2 with TLAC1. TLAC1 is unique. Maybe van H1 has two connections to two transports, for example, internet and MPLS. 
with the color we can unit that to transport look at here in our example we have van h1 connected only to internet and van h2 connected only to internet but if you have van h1 connected to internet and also van h1 connected to mpls okay and you uh, you have now two tlock tlock one tlock two the tlock one is system ip I, since the system ip of van h1 plus color internet plus encapsulation we will talk about encapsulation but and also for co transport connection to mpls you have tlock2 that is the system ip of vh1 and plus mpls when you send net a and you want only that net a traffic received in internet you can send net a plus t uh, with the tlock1 and when vsmart receive this update and send this to the for example vh2 in vh2 this information now is received if you want to send traffic to net a you should use only tlock1 not tlock2 for example vh2 also has connection to internet and mpls and have two tlock for example tlock3 and tlock4 okay tlock3 and tlock4 okay and after that when you send net a with tlock1 and to vsmart and vsmart send net a with tlock1 to the van h van h2 knows that for receiving for sending traffic to net a to net a it should use tlock1 over internet and don't use and vh2 doesn't use tlock4 to receive to tlock2 only tlock1 this is the ident unique identifier of the transport or the circuit that we want use to routing okay because of this tlock is is important identifier is important tag for a circuit but what is the encapsulation in st1 data plane we have two types of encapsulation one type and better type is ipsec and other type is gre you know that ipsec is secure because in ipsec we have authentication we have encryption we have confidentiality and other security aspects but in gre we don't have any type of security okay because of that although we can use gre but we don't use GRE anytime. We only and better to use IPsec. After, after that, Van H2 receive Net A with TLOC1, it should establish a secure connection with, for example, IPsec to the Van H or unsecure connection, for example, GRE to the Van H1. But van H2, how? But how van H2 knows know that what type of connection, secure or unsecure connection, should be established between VH2 and VH1 with the encapsulation? Look at here. When we configuring TLOC, we configure, for example, system IP and color and also encapsulation. For example, I use IPsec. This is the encapsulation IPsec. And also for uh, for MPLS, I use IPsec. And here also on IPsec, we, conf we will configure it in the TLOC configuration or in or over the interface configuration IPsec. You will you will configure all of these concepts. Okay. Now don't you sh you shouldn't think to configuration, only to concepts. Okay. After net A was received from VSmart with OMP to VH2, VH2 knows that 
To send traffic to net A, it should use TLAC1. TLAC1 means system IP, system IP of VH1, for example, 11110, plus color, biz internet, plus encapsulation type, IPsec. This means that VH2, if you want to send traffic to net A, you should configure, you should establish a tunnel to system IP of 1110 over biz internet connection, for example, and also with IPsec, not GRE. You see that, you know that now that TLUX has information for the VH2 to establish a, a connection to send traffic to the, for example, net A. All of the information is here, are here. For example, system IP of destination, transport type, and also encapsulation type. Although we need a te we need another information. For example, how can we reach to 11110? We will talk about that. But if we use 11110 as a system IP and we can establish one one with 11110 session over biz internet and with IPsec, we can have a secure connection between van H2 and van H1 and send traffic between of them. Look at here. After this advertisement between van H1 van H1 and van H2, we will have a secure connection. You know that in the data plane, secure connections are establishing with IPsec. Okay? Yes, I know that many topics should I consider and should I explain to clarify these concepts. But first, you should understand the outline. The outline is every van edge should send their connected or learned routes in the service site with OMP over DTLS connection to the VSmart. You know that we don't have any control connection between VHs, VHs. For example, between VH1 and VH2, we don't have OMP peer neighborship. Because of that, we can't send, for example, net A with OMP to VH2 from VH1. We only can send OMP routes to VSmart. And after that, VSmart propagate that routes to other routers. Okay, this is easy. After sending the routes to other routers, other routers, other van edges, now is knowing that they can send traffic to, for example, net A in our example, with what TLAC, what system IP, in what transport, and with what encapsulation type. Okay, this is SD-WAN. As you remember, I mentioned in the previous video that in the SD-WAN, all of the routers don't need to calculate the routing tables. All calculation are done in the VSmart. All of these routers send their routes to VSmart and in VSmart calculation about best routes are occurring and after that send the selected routes sells, uh, routes and uh, send the selected routes routes to other van aids such as bgp road reflector it's the same topic no you understand one of the function of omp and also you know about color but a little we should talk about color in the next videos more specifically but now you know that a color 
is a tag that we can unique tlock. If you use only system IP, yes, the tlocks of one van age are distinct from the tlocks are with in other van age. But the tlocks in one van age needs need another parameter that is color. With color, we can unique the tlocks in the one van age. But, tila, but color has another usage. We will talk about that in the other videos. Okay? Don't worry about the concept of color more than the concepts that mentioned in this video. Now, okay? This is, the, this is how routing occurs in the SD-WAN. We should implement this type of routing and after that, we will understand more and more. And also I want to mention another topic for routing. Look at here. In van H1, this is for, for example van H1, and we have net A, and also you know that we have OMP, OMP that is the routing protocol of SD-WAN in between van edge and for example vsmart okay first things that i want to mention is that the omp is a proprietary protocol omp can't use in the service site omp only is using bit in inside of stvan overlay Okay, you know that OMP only used for changing routes between VHs and VSmarts or VSmarts and VSmarts. Okay, but you know that, for example, in VH1, maybe we have routing with the transport site. For example, here is R1 and we use OSPF, we use EIGRP, we use BGP, okay, OSPF here. And also, we have VH2 that is using OSPF for routing or EIGRP for routing VH2. And here, for example, EIGRP or with R2, for example. Maybe all of the routings in LAN side with one protocol or some type of protocols. Okay, look at here. It's an important topics here we have vsmart you know that between vsmart and van age we use omp okay in the transport side only in the transport side here is the transport side vpn0 transport side and in the service side transport side okay and in the service side, we use we can use many type of protocols or a static routing. Okay, service site. Okay, here. Van H1, van H2, here is service site, or here, for example. Okay. And if we learn in VH1 with OSPF some routes, we should send these routes to OMP. How can we send the OSPF routes with OMP? What is your guess? Yes, with redistribution. We can redistribute OSPF to OMP in van H1. Redistribute OMP to OSPF to OMP and send net A to VSmart. And also, we can redistribute net B that I received from EIGRP to OMP to send to the VSmart. Because of that, in some cases, we should redistribute 
routing protocol routes that are received to OMP to send to VSmart. And after from, v, from OMP the routes are receiving, we should redistribute again OMP into our, our service side routing protocol. For example, we receive net A with OMP, we should redistribute it to the EIGRP. We will configure it. You will see all of these topics. Because of that, now you are know that we use redistribution. We can use, not every time, many times. You can redistribute the routes received from the routing protocols in service side to the OMP as a routing protocol in transport side. And after that, redistribute OMP to another routing protocol. This is one of other important points that we should consider. Okay, you know that OMP routes and send policies and used for a key exchange inside of DTLS connection. Because of that, OMP use, is using, is working as secure form. It's, it's an important point. Another important aspect that I should consider about OMP is that, as I mentioned before, all of the things that is occurring inside of the SD WAN is proprietary, are proprietary. If you remember, when I talk about traditional router, I said that we have control plane, we have data plane, and other plane. I mentioned before that the communication between control plane and data plane is unique, is proprietary, is Cisco proprietary. Why? Because it's inside of the box, inside of the router. But the communication between router with other router, for example, routing protocols updates, for example, OSPF, is non-proprietary. It's a standard. Why? Because maybe we use Cisco router with another brand router. Because of that, we should use a standard protocol. We should use a standard rules. But inside of the box, we use we can use proprietary concepts. Okay, you know that. And also because of that, in SD WAN terminology, we are using with proprietary protocol we are using proprietary protocol for exchanging routes inside of the routing road inside of the st -WAN. you know the name of that protocol is omp and this is cisco proprietary and inside of st -WAN. and we can use omp with relation to for example outside routers outside of overlay routers and only we can use omp inside of the st -WAN. But it can exchange, it can redistribute route routes from outside of SD WAN overlay, for example, service side, into the OMP. We can exchange these routes with redistribution. Okay? And you know that maybe more than one VSmart in our SD WAN. If you have more than VSmart, and this is for redundancy and load sharing, for example, we have VSmart 1 and VSmart 2, all of this process are repeated for these two VSmart, for example, VSmart 1 and VSmart 2. Okay? VSmart 1 router system IP is, for example, 1111 and VSmart 2, 1112. And this process, the process of advertising routes to VSmarts and then advertising routes with OMP from VSmarts to van aids are repeated, okay, with two VSmart. It's 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 an obvious topics. But when, for example, VH2 receive 
net A from 2 VSmart, it should accept one of these routes. By default, WAN H use the VSmart with the lower system IP. For example, if VSmart 1 send this net A and VSmart 2 send this net A, WAN H2 only accept one of those routes by default. The routes that is received from VSmart with lower system IP in this in this example, in our example, the VSmart 1 has system IP of 1111 and VSmart 2 has system IP of 1112 and you see that VSmart 1 has lower system IP. Congratulations, you are now understanding the routing, you are now knowing the process of routing inside of Estevan. But with more videos talking about routing, and with more practice and implementing SD-WAN topics, you will understand better and better. For now, it's sufficient. For now, it's sufficient to review these topics. And after that, we can understand another topics. After a while, we can implement the first scenario. In the first scenario, we will show some topics, for example, routing table, OMP routes, or other topics. And after that, we will understand better. Okay, first review the topics in this video and try to understand more and more.